Module 4, Oxygen Alveolar Arterial Gradient. Let's begin. In this module, you will learn how to calculate the alveolar arterial oxygen gradient. This is important in diagnosing the cause of hypoxemia in a neonate and determining how you can correct it. The oxygen alveolar arterial gradient is also known as the AA gradient. This equation is used to understand whether lungs are effectively transferring oxygen from the atmosphere to the pulmonary circulation. The larger the gradient, the poorer the oxygen transfer. The AA gradient is derived from the alveolar gas equation in which PaO2 is the partial pressure of alveolar oxygen, PiO2 is the partial pressure of inhaled oxygen, R is a respiratory exchange ratio, and F is a correction factor. If you are not given the value for R, you can presume that its value is 0.8. The correction factor F is usually negligible and is omitted from the equation in all practical purposes. The PiO2 is obtained from the atmospheric gas pressure, the water vapor pressure, and the FiO2 in decimal form. When calculating the AA gradient, you can assume that at sea level, the atmospheric gas pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury and that water pressure is 47 millimeters of mercury. If you are not at sea level, you should be provided with the atmospheric pressure at the different elevation. If you substitute the equation for PiO2 into the alveolar gas equation, you obtain this equation. If you subtract the partial pressure of arterial oxygen, or PaO2, from either side, you will have the final alveolar arterial gradient equation. In addition to understanding how the AA gradient is derived, it is important to understand how it can change in certain disease states and its implications. In room air, the AA gradient increases with increasing ventilation perfusion mismatch implying that there is worsening oxygen transfer. If the AA gradient for a patient on 100% oxygen remains greater than 600 for 8 to 12 hours, then extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, or ECMO, is considered. This can be a useful tool to anticipate next steps in an extremely ill infant, particularly for infants in a NICU that does not offer ECMO, as transport of these patients can be challenging. Calling for transport to an ECMO center early if the AA gradient is rising is appropriate. Let's practice with an example. A newly born term infant with respiratory failure of unknown etiology is intubated on mechanical ventilation on 100% FiO2 in your hospital, which is at sea level. The oxygen saturations is currently 90%. You obtain an arterial blood gas. The pH is 7.12, the PCO2 is 60, the PO2 is 45, and your base excess is negative 17. You are asked by your attending to calculate the AA gradient. First, let's review our equation and the pieces of information we already have. The FiO2 is 100%. Remember that in this equation, FiO2 is used in its decimal form, so 100% equals 1.0. Additionally, you know that at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is 760 millimeters of mercury and the water vapor pressure is 47 millimeters of mercury. And, unless told otherwise, R equals 0.8. Lastly, plug in your PCO2 and your PaO2 and complete your calculation. Your AA gradient equals 593. In this module, you learned how the alveolar arterial gradient is used to determine whether the lungs are transferring oxygen from the atmosphere to the pulmonary circulation appropriately. The larger the AA gradient, the worse the oxygen transfer to the pulmonary circulation. Calculating the AA gradient is a useful tool to determine whether a patient requires ECMO. This concludes Module 4. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.